This is a big question, but uh, let's start. So CONI is really unique. It's a unique conference which combines debates in central contested uh, topics in neurology, delivering world-class insight into the most controversial issues faced by clinicians. And of course, uh, in this way, helping them to understand the discrepancies um, which uh, uh, between opposing uh, points of view. And uh, uh, this is our 18th, uh, uh, 18th meeting that was in Dubrovnik uh, just last year. And we include uh, topics every year um, on stroke, on MS, on Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, um, and, uh, and also uh, least understood uh, issues like uh, functional uh, debates functional uh, areas, uh, so uh, um, non-epileptic seizures, for example, and many others. And uh, this year, we're also going to stress uh, topics like uh, the role of biomarkers in uh, early uh, diagnosis, in differential diagnosis, in regarding treatment, and of course, uh, helping us to understand the pathogenesis of diseases and therapy. So uh, we have, uh, of course, all these uh, topics that I've mentioned, uh, but also um, new new uh, topics that have not been existed before. So uh, we didn't have so much about, uh, about the autoimmune diseases. Now we have a lot about uh, neuroimmune diseases. A lot about uh, about epilepsy, about uh, epilepsy and uh, autoimmune epilepsy, autoimmune other disorders. All of these are critical, and uh, particularly encephalitis, uh, that we are only now trying to understand or getting to understand the high frequency of autoimmune encephalitis and what causes it and how to best uh, treat it. So. Um, we're going to talk about um, about uh, um, about MOG for in, if we're talking about uh, autoimmune diseases. Um, what do we do? How do we treat uh, MOG-related uh, uh, problems? Um, and uh, what happens? How how much should we really depend on the um, identification of uh, antibodies? And what uh, what do we do in double negative autoimmune uh, MOG disease? Um, so this is uh, another important issue. And of course, uh, talking about treatment. So the issue is not only when to start treatment and how to start treatment, but how to go on and for how long do we need to go on with treatment? So for example, we all the data that we have about epilepsy is about how to treat epilepsy when it first starts. But patients with epilepsy or with multiple cirrhosis go on to have the disease for many, many decades and being treated for many, many decades. And we don't know uh, what is uh, the best treatment and how to stop and when to stop the treatment. And it's not a trivial issue because uh, these drugs are effective and we know how effective they are and we know about their safety in the short run, because this is the way these studies have been done. But now, uh, when people have been treated with these drugs uh, in multiple sclerosis or in epilepsy or any other disease for 20, 30, 40 years, these are not the same people. They have changed. Now they have other comorbidities. Are these drugs or the treatments that we give them, are they as, as safe and as effective now? or should we really stop? And if a patient with multiple sclerosis, for example, one of the debates that we're going to have, if a patient uh, with multiple sclerosis has been free of attacks under treatment for let's say 20, 30 years, should we go on to treat them with the same drug or should we try and stop and see what happens? So this is uh, the uh, topics that we're going to discuss. And of course, uh, the speakers uh, will be you know, key opinion leaders from the world. And the, all the debates are pro-con debates. So one person say, yes, the pers person who's uh, 
secure with epilepsy treatment for 20 years, 30 years, don't touch it. Let's go on. And the opponent will say, no, we have to reconsider in each case individually whether treatment is still uh, the same treatment or whether it's a different treatment that, uh, or no treatment, maybe because the MS has already died off. So these are important things for the clinician. And having the debate in this form, in this format, shows the uh, the listener what are the uh, pros and what are the cons. So it's not like listening to a speaker who say, what should we do with the Alzheimer's disease or with Parkinson's disease right now? The question is whether this treatment also has limitations. What are the limitations of this new treatment that has been suggested? And uh, having the pro and the con side by side is so important. So this is really a teaching exercise. CONI is a teaching exercise. And uh, so people can cast their vote. We have a voting system. So in each debate, before it starts, people can vote uh, through their iPhone and say uh, whether it's yes or no, whether it's A or B. And uh, once uh, the debate has been concluded, they vote again, and we see who was more convincing. And uh, again, it's a, it's a sort of a game, but uh, really the important thing is that it, it, it's a teaching game. So that's why we have it. Uh, we have, uh, of course, uh, uh, we have, of course, uh, the uh, results of the voting. Uh, in addition to these uh, pro-con debates, we have a few plenary lectures, not too many, but uh, a few of them. So I'm going to give a talk about what is Alzheimer's disease today? Why have we failed in the treatment or made only small steps in the treatment of Alzheimer's disease? And I'm going to say that actually Alzheimer's disease is not really a disease, it is really a syndrome. And syndromes you cannot cure you can, of course, prevent them if you understand the mechanism. So uh, come, I hope that uh, many of you will be there and listen to my uh, debate. Of course, there are also free abstracts that are submitted, and uh, there is, uh, this uh, um, key opinion leaders will lead the presentation of each of these uh, um, abstracts and have time for to question and to comment. Uh, on these uh, topics. So I think this is really an un unique conference. It's really unique because of the combination of debates uh, on these uh, central contested areas that I've mentioned. So uh, London is a marvelous place. Uh, I'm sure many of you have been to London and will want to come again. And those who have not yet been to London, this is your chance come, the time is, of COVID is over, um, we, we can again come and meet each other personally, hug each other, kiss each other. It's a unique opportunity. Come with us, stay with us in London, enjoy the science, enjoy the company, enjoy the city. Thank you very much, and I'm looking forward to meet each of you in Coney next month.